Welcome back to the fifth and final lecture in the series. This lecture will be a bit different. I will pick apart some simple examples that I have made for iBooks or any EPUB 3 reader. So I'm not dependent on the publisher online. In the pages, if I open that up, we can see that first there's just the introductory page that I have open now. We'll be looking at this example, how to make a counting example. We will be looking at this one. It's just a simple subtraction. I don't know if this is the best way to do it. You know your subjects much better than I do. I wanted to do something for those that are language teachers or in a different country than they live in. And this is some Swedish, so you'll learn some Swedish to learn the word till and från. We're seeing a lot of buttons and it gets kind of messy. And this is why we need to have layers when we are working with interactive content. I did a little physics or aerodynamics example. Neither am I an expert at farming, uh, but I will show you how a potato grows and I will reuse that model again. I'm fortunate enough to have a wife who is a medical illustrator. Then we will look at some interactive element, uh, how we can make a slide out window. Uh, we will actually just use these buttons here, this one up and down to swap between two texts. And this will be a tab. I hope you stay with us as we go through these examples. But let's look at the examples first interactively. Go in digital publishing workspace and they're either from the timing or the animation panel. I would like to take the timing panel because there is some timing going on with the sequence of the animation being important. So let me move the timing panel over to this side. Before I show you the animation, the order of the animation is and we will look at the layers as well. In layer one there is nothing. Then I have one layer animation. In this layer you can see I've named them so they will be easier for me to find. If I shut them off temporarily I can see oh okay that's the first circle there, that's the second circle there. Also I've split the text in the lower part of the film into small snippets. So we have the two as a separate text the plus sign is a separate object, the three is a separate object, the equals and the five. And I need to separate them as different objects if I want to animate them separately. So I'm going to press from the timing panel the little play icon that's here. These are two settings, the one to view spread mode and this is to view the document mode. We just need to view the current spread. It's counting, showing first one and two, giving two, plus three dots. It gives you the three equals and then I'm animating over from the dots to make the five. If I select one of these dots here you can see in the layers which one is selected. We can't see it on the animation but if I open up the animation panel as well and I'm sorry it becomes a lot of panels that are open here and it gets quite crowded. It really is a big advantage to have a huge monitor. So let's look at this one. As I select the one object I can see that this is called circle, especially when I'm starting up. Just take the time to name things so that they're easier to find. One of two to be consistent with how I've been naming the ones at the five. When I rename the, that one, it is also renamed in the layers panel. And as it's renamed, it will also be renamed one of two as the first object that appears on my timing in week four, we went through the different animations and the options. Refer to the YouTube playlist where you can see how to make buttons, animations, and the different interactive elements. So we could do the same thing then for the circles here for number three, one of three. I will select this one here. This one is using a fly in from left command. It uses what is called a custom motion path. This green thing here is the motion path. The distance between the dots is the speed because each dot here represents one showing. So it's going to move fast in the beginning and then slow down. And if I press this button down here, show animation proxy, a shadow of where the image was at the start helps me to align above another dot. There is also the visibility to say that it will be hidden until animated. So this is sort of my timeline if we think of it in animation. And if we look at some of these ones here, well, like the three, there's a short delay of half a second before it actually gets the equal sign. And that's what the delay means. It will pause a little while and then it will continue. Animations in InDesign can be non-linear and they can be triggered by different events, like, for example, by the press of a button. Let's look at the next example. Because there can only be one animation per object, sometimes you will need to actually group them. If you select the group here, you can see that when I'm done with this one, I want to fade out the whole group. For my language, you can see this is all in a group. When this example is done, we're going to play the second example. So sometimes you will need to duplicate objects just to get the animation that you need. 
let's turn off the dog and the cat. It still consists of a lot of groups. We have the whole group, example one. What's it going to do? It does have a custom animation, not sure what it is. Yes, it's fade out, it says here, right? And if we look at the timing, it's going to fade out here before the cat and the dog appear. There, let's play the example. The house is there. This will happen to you as well. If you try and play an animation and you've turned off a lot of layers, you're not going to see very much happen. Make sure all the layers are active as you try and see what you're doing. Back to the cluttered interface and let's play it as it was. First I get the text. The man goes to the house. She goes from the house. And then the whole group fades away. The cat comes in. The dog comes in. The dog goes to the cat with a custom path. The cat swaps image to the second cat and then it moves away with the word from. This is the man. Again, I can call it man to house. And I think the easiest thing is for you just to pick this apart. And that's why I'll make it available. Let's look at another example. Here we have lots of little arrows that are duplicated and I actually made the one motion path. Once I had the movement, then I could duplicate the arrows. And you can see that the arrow is moving and the group of the arrows in the wing slowly moves in the timing panel right down at the bottom. There is the option to link different objects. And at this time, if I double click the group to get hold of one of the arrows, I can see the custom path that I've made that follows the wing. And it's basically used from a custom move right. So the animation was just saying move right. And then I modified the path using the pen tool. So if I unlink this one here, we will see that these will play in sequence and it's kind of disturbing. So we're seeing one or two. As they're looping, once the others catch up, they will keep on playing. And since they're part of a group, you will still get the raising of the wing. Selecting these objects and then using the chain, I link them together. When I play it now, they will be playing the one time together in sync. You see that there is a group called lift. It contains all the different air arrows, including their animations. The wing shape, let's look at that there. Here are all the different lines. The path at the, mo the moment at the bottom is the wing. Shall we label this one here? So the wing and all these little lines here make one group. And if I select that group, you can see that it has a duration to lift slowly during three seconds. It will make the move from this point to this point. The show animation proxy will let me know where the finished position of the object will be. Next example here. This is a swap animation. Again, I have named the layers to make them as clear as possible. The one button is swapping out another one, which is swapping out another one, and so on. Let me just lock the background layer. Each button, if we close down the steps to see just the first button, includes a normal view. Instead of using the animation, we can look at this one. When I select button one, like so, we can see that the button has an action to show hide buttons and forms. What it chooses to do is hide button one, that is itself, and show button two, which is the next stage. Included in the button are the actual first image, which is created in Illustrator, and the text, which is just an ordinary text object. There we have the first button. It's going to hide this button, and it's going to show button number two. And when I look at button two, you can see it has the same structure, one text and one image. If I select it, it has the action to show and hide. So if I click button two, it's going to hide button two and move on to button three. And we can see it's the same pattern repeating again. This is a lot of work to do, but if you've done it, you can reuse it. If you've spent the time to actually make this kind of a structure, now that I've renamed the buttons, it will be easier for me to work. And I'm just going to shut down all the ones except stage one. I'll go into stage one. And I will double click to enter the group. Now I have the image selected. So using command D, I will find the image that I have in week five. So I take the first image here and I will open this one 
replacing the contents and I get the picture in the middle. If I go in in the hierarchy menu I can select the content and check the scale of the content and I will add the scale of this content to be 200%. Command Alt C then move the container so that it will fit just on the top. This is the first stage and it's not planting a potato but it is a child being born. Stage 1. I will go into button 2. This time I'm keeping button 1 visible and that it will help me to better place the image. I will lock stage 1. I will double click to go into the stage 2 image. Command D to place image. Choose the image. Open. Go into the image. Set the size to 200%. But that's okay. Command Alt C again to resize the image. V to set my selection tool. So I'll move this image now so that it aligns to the top and right corner. And we can see that the child is moving. It's almost on the same page, but not exactly the same page. This kind of animation is going to need a lot of illustration.